Thanks to everyone for tuning in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis YouTube channel for another worship experience. I wish above all things that you are prospering and in good health, even as your soul prospers. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, through your word, help us to realize the ineffectiveness of works done by us to affect a change in our lives for the better. Open our hearts and minds this morning through your word uh, to always acknowledge the power in your amazing grace that works for us and in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's spend a little time this uh, morning looking at the thought of how to die to the law. How to die to the law. Our text comes from Romans chapter 7, verse 4 through 6. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Romans chapter 7, verses 4 through 6. And it reads, Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruits for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused uh, by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the spirit. So again, we're talking about how to die to the law. Now, hopefully, uh, I can offer you a personal experience this morning that will help us to really get the picture of what I'm trying to get across, of dying to the law. Uh, dying to the law doesn't mean that the law is done away with or that uh, uh, we die and come, come back a new uh, something else or anything like that. But it's uh, all about dying to the dependence upon the law to make our relationship with God right or to even give us a relationship period with God, our dependence on the law. Uh, now, I've gone through a great change in the last six months, and I must give all of the credit to the Holy Spirit. After a lifetime of being dependent on sweets and processed foods, a whole uh, life now, uh, as a whole, I've died to my dependence on those foods. When I'm driving along the streets of Memphis and as I pass by the places I used to stop to get my sweet and processed food fixes, I can hear my old addictions calling my name but because I've quit depending on them to fulfill my cravings, I'm able to keep going without stopping. The first step in dying to the law is to stop depending on it to right our relationship with God. Keeping the law was an impossible task for man mankind. The law uh, work alone it uh, was not sufficient to fix our broken relationship with God. It, 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 the law basically worked all alone. It didn't work with faith. It didn't work with grace. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Allow God to diminish our dependence upon the law is what dying to the law is all about. Most of the time, we are drawn away from God by our own lust. Now, if we kill the lust and there will be no need for a law to identify our disobedience to God. Now, the law depends on grace, which makes the law better, even by fulfilling the law. The law relies on us being alive and active as we were born to act. We were conceived in sin and shaped in iniquities, and the law depends on us doing just that. Dying to the passions and desires of self 
which depends on the law and what's uh, what good we can do to make up for the bad that we've done so that we can please God. Dying to self allows us to come alive as new creatures in Christ Jesus. The new creature relies on what Jesus has done for us that pays the price for the penalty of our sinning. Now, we must think in terms of a statement that Paul made about the schoolmaster. A schoolmaster does not mean a teacher as we oft time interpret it to be. But the schoolmaster was a, 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 a better understood by a word called pedagogue. Bet pedagogue, and it's shortened by a page, someone that goes and does something for someone else. For example, one who entrusted, who is entrusted with the supervision of children, taking them to and from school and being responsible for their safety and their manners. So the pedagogue uh, was stern and severe in his discipline. And that's a great analogy of the law. The law was stern and severe in its discipline of God's people. So the law was, in essence, a pedagogue. Uh, a pedagogue, the, the correct pronunciation of it. Uh, now, pedagogue was to the Jews... Uh, with a view to Christ, for example, to prepare us for faith in Christ by producing convictions of guilt and helplessness. The office of the pedagogue uh, ceased when faith came. A an example of that is the object of that faith, the seed, which is Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24 through 27 reads, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, Jesus Christ have put on Christ. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, first of all, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the purpose of the Mosaic law was a, to accomplish three important things. Again, the purpose of the Mosaic law was to accomplish three important things. The first thing that it was to accomplish was to reveal the holy character of the eternal God to the nation of Israel. Leviticus 19 and 2 speaks to all the says, speak to all of the congregation of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbath, and for I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make yourselves any gods of cast metal, for I am the Lord your God. And when you offer a sacrifice of, uh, of peace offerings to the Lord, you shall offer it so that you may be accepted by the Lord. Leviticus 20 and 7 says, So sanctify yourselves and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. Exodus 20 and uh, Exodus chapter 19, verse 6 says, And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. 
Leviticus chapter 11, chapter 44 says, For I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am holy. Amos 3 and 3 says, Do, do two walk together unless they have agreed to meet? When God declares that he was well pleased with his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, what God was saying is that Jesus' character and conduct was the same as God, and they agree. Matthew 5 and 48 says, uh, you therefore must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And then 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 verse 15 says, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. So the, the law was working to, 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 to get us to be holy like God in our conduct in the manners in which we lived. And then the second thing that the law, that was the purpose of the law, was to set apart the nation of Israel as distinct from all the other nations. And he is working through the Holy Spirit to set all believers in this day and age apart for himself also. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5 says, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And then the third purpose of the law was to reveal the sinfulness of mankind. John chapter 3 verse 19 says, And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, and that they are wrought in God. From here to the end of, uh, of, of this sermon, uh, uh, the, uh, however you want to call it, uh, from here on, I'm going to make some rapid fire statements, and I'm going to give you some verses to back those statements up. Uh, for you to look for look at on your own so that you can get more out of this sermon uh, than you would without the scriptures and doing some work on your own. When you put more work on into it uh, than just listening, then you'll get more out of it. And you are responsible for getting as much as you want out of each lesson you hear, each sermon you hear, you're responsible for getting as much as you want. And if you don't get much, it's because you don't want much. If you want a lot, you'll get a lot. Now, here we go. We can seek to destroy the law. The Pharisees thought Jesus was doing this. To begin with, his authority did not come from any of the recognized leaders or schools during his time here on earth. Instead of the teachings from authorities, as did the scribes and the Pharisees, Jesus taught with authority. The scribes and Pharisees got their authority from other teachers and whatnot. But Jesus taught with authority, not only in his authority, but also in his activities, the way he lived. Jesus seemed to defy the law. He deliberately healed people on the Sabbath day and paid no attention to the tra traditions of the Pharisees. Our Lord's association also seemed contrary to the law. 
for he was the friend of publicans and sinners. And I'm so glad that he's a friend of mine. Yet it was the Pharisees who were destroying the law by their traditions. They robbed the people of the word of God and by their hypocritical or hypocritical lives, they dis disobeyed the very law that they claimed to protect. The Pharisees thought that they were conserving God's word when in reality they were preserving God's word. They were embalming it so that it no longer had any life to it. Woo, that was good. Can I say that again? The Pharisees thought that they were conserving God's word. When in reality, they were preserving, just like you preserve something. And how they were preserving it was, in essence, an example of it is that they were embalming it so that it no longer had life. Their rejections of Christ when he came to the earth proved that the inner truth of the law had not penetrated their hearts. And it's bad when you go to church all of your life and the word of God does not penetrate your heart. Jesus made it clear that he had come to honor the law. And to help God's people love it and learn it and live it. He would not accept the uh, artificial righteousness of the religious leaders. And their righteousness was only an external masquerade. Their religion was a dead ritual, not a loving relationship. It was artificial. It did not produce itself in others in a living way. It made them proud, not humble. It led to bondage and not freedom. Now we can seek to fulfill the law. Jesus Christ fulfilled God's law in every area of his life. He fulfilled it in his birth because he was made under the law as stated in Galatians chapter four and verse chapter four, verse four. Every pres prescribed ritual for a Jewish boy was performed by on him by his parents. He certainly fulfilled the law of in his life for nobody was ever, ever able to accuse him of sin. When, 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 when the secular leader, I believe it was Pilate, searched the record, he found that, he said, all I can find is that he went about doing good. I find no fault in him. While Jesus did submit to the tra traditions of the scribes and the Pharisees, he always did what God commanded in the law. The father was well pleased with him, his son, his only begotten son. And that's stated in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17 and chapter 17, verse 5 on the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus also fulfilled the law in his teaching. It was this that brought him into conflict with the religious leaders. When he began his ministry, Jesus found the living word of God entrusted with man-made traditions and interpretations. He broke away this thick crust of religion and brought the people back to God's word. Then he opened the word to them in a new and in a living way. They were accustomed to the letter of the law and not the inner kernel of life. But it was in his death and resurrection that Jesus especially fulfilled the law. For he bore the curse of the law, as stated in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. He fulfilled the Old Testament type and ceremonies so that they no longer are required of the people of God. And you can read chapter 9 and 10 of the book of Hebrews for more along those lines. 
He set aside the old covenant and brought in the new covenant. Jesus did not destroy the law by fighting it. He destroyed it by fulfilling it. Perhaps an illustration will make this clear. If I had a, a walnut, and I love walnuts, I can destroy it by smashing it with a hammer. That's one way. I can put it on a rock and I can smash it to bits with a hammer. Or I can plant it in the ground and let it fulfill itself by becoming an old, a, a walnut tree. Well, I, I'm closing now. You, you know how we preach, especially African-American preachers in the Black Baptist Church say, I'm closing now. Uh, but stay with me, I'm not finished. I'm just starting my closing. That's like an airplane, a pilot coming, setting up for uh, a landing. He, 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 he hits the pattern. He goes downwind, crosswind and upwind. And then he flares out and lands the plane. That's what I'm about to do. Now, when Jesus died, he rent the veil of the temple and opened the way into the holiest of holies. As stated in Hebrews 10 and 19, he broke down the wall that separated the Jews and the Gentiles from God. As stated in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 through 13. Because the law was fulfilled in Christ, we now no longer uh, need a temple made with hand. As stated in Acts 7 and 48. Our religious rituals, we don't need them anymore. As stated in Colossians chapter 2, verse 10 and through 13. Now, how can we fulfill the law? We can fulfill the law by yielding to the Holy Spirit, by not grieving the Holy Spirit and allowing him to work in our lives, as stated in Romans chapter eight, verse one through three. The Holy Spirit enables us to experience the righteousness of the law in our daily living. This does not mean that we live sinlessly, perfect lives. But it does mean that Christ lives out his life through us by the power of the Holy Spirit, as stated in Galatians chapter two, verse 20. When we read the Beatitudes, you remember the Beatitudes, I'm sure. We see the perfect character of Jesus Christ. While Jesus never had uh, to mourn over his sins since he was sinless, he was still a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief, as stated in, you know, the verse Isaiah 53, verse three. He never had to hunger and thirst after righteousness since he was a holy son of God. But he did delight in the father's will and find uh, satis his satisfaction in doing the father's will, as stated in John chapter four, verse thirty four. The only way that we can experience the righteousness of the beatitude is through the power of Jesus Christ. Only through the power of Jesus Christ are we made right with God. Only through the power of Jesus Christ can we achieve a personal relationship with God and, and walk in agreement with God and live lives that are holy as God is and hear God say, this is my, 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 my I'm, I'm well pleased with my child. And here's something that I'm, I'm looking forward to one day hearing God say about little old me. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I, I, I don't want to hear, he don't have to, to say anything about Reverend Henry Jackson, a doctor, or apostle. I just want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. 
because I saw you living a new life, not dependent on what you do, but depending upon what Jesus did on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. He died to pay the price for our sin. And early the third day morning, he rose for our justification to make us right with God. That's all I've got for tonight. Let us pray, or today rather. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son and thank you for your Holy Spirit that assures us that you are always with us and leading us uh, beside the still waters of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, as always, wear your mask when you're out in public and uh, practice safe distancing. And the third thing is wash your hands often. Develop good sanitary practices by washing your hands often. And with that, I'll see you on up the road. Bye bye.